The year is 1998. The Spice Girls are an international sensation. Armageddon is released in theaters, and a book called Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is released in the U.S. If you don't know it, your children almost certainly do. The year prior, the same Harry Potter book was released in the U.K., but the American version had a few major differences. For one, the U.K. title Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was changed. And of course, the grammar was changed from British to American English. But the biggest differences were the book covers and the addition of an illustration at the beginning of each chapter. Behind the story of the boy who once lived under a staircase is the story of Marie Grandpre, the artist who helped bring him to life for American readers. What house are you in? I'm a um, Hufflepuff. You're a Hufflepuff? Yes. Do you think that fits? I do. Uh, It's funny. At first, I didn't. I have to tell you why. Because when I was taking the test online, right, my whole family took it. And then they said, Mom, take the test. I took the test. And I I said, I'm a Hufflepuff. And they said, really? But it turns out when I was um, taking the test, I'm embarrassed to say this, I didn't know enough to scroll down to all the (laughs) choices for my answers. And I ended up choosing things that... I didn't think were really me, but it was the closest thing to me. And and so I said I should really be able to take this over again after I found out. And my daughter said, no, because that's exactly what a Hufflepuff would do. So you're a Hufflepuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm Doug Fraser, and this is what we do. I'm going to start with, with a big one. What is your favorite story of all time? Oh, gosh. That is so hard. Um, I, I can't say, I don't know. I yeah. have to. Um, you want to come back to that one later? Could I? Okay. So the first question was a swing and a miss, but hey, it happens. It's part of the give and take of a conversation, the, the struggle of creating a story. And for Mary, struggle plays a key role in her artistic process. Art and life are very closely related for me. I found that um, my best work comes from when I start out with a lot of struggle, I can't quite get something or I don't know how to create something or I don't know where it's going to go. Sometimes you just have to stop and let it unfold by itself, which is what you have to do in life too. I mean, as a mother, I have to let go of a lot. I can't control my teenager. I don't want to, and it doesn't work anyway. So you just kind of have to stop and listen. You have to be a good listener and a good observer, and then you move forward, I think. You mentioned that struggle is, is, it sounds like you're saying a necessary part of the best work that you create. Yeah. You must have moments, though, where you're discouraged and you want to give up. When you have those moments, what motivates you to keep going? Really, I've been in the, in the art making business for so long that I know that that's, that's the way it goes. You always start with struggle. Struggle means that you aren't settling for something less than great in front of you. And so that's why you're struggling. You're struggling because there's something better coming. And if you just, if you're continually just, you know, working on the same stuff and it's not growing, then you're not going to feel struggle. You're going to just feel complacent. And that's not who I want to be as an artist or, or as a person for that matter. And I mean, my art teaches me a lot about my life because it's so easy to make art and to, to look at what you're making and then see it as part of the bigger picture for your life. Mary's layered view of the intersection between life and art is reflected in her work on the Harry Potter series. For example, on the cover of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, there's much more than meets the eye. If you look closely, you'll see a signature of Mary's style, hidden symbols and clues. The books were so packed full of characters and little magical things, information, all kinds of stuff, very visually um, rich writing. And I just decided it would be so fun to take some of those things and tuck them into the scenes in the book because they're wraparound covers. They're really long pieces. And so there's a lot of room to play with. In the case of the first Harry Potter book, The pillars and the floor create a structure for the whole piece. And that ties together all these symbols and things. And so, you know, Dumbledore is peeking around one of the pillars. He's not really, he's half hidden. And then there's a key that's hidden, I think, on the back cover. 
there's a person coming out from under from behind a curtain that's half hidden and i think there's a unicorn that's um running in the background and also um the dog fluffy the three-headed dog is peeking out from behind a pillar so Mm. there was a lot to pick from don't be jealous but mary was given the books to read before the release as you can imagine because she had to illustrate the books from the day she received the final manuscript to her due date was only about three months. I couldn't tell anybody that I actually had it in my possession. Oh. I had to actually agree to purchase a safe to put it in the safe. And, and so it would, so that, you know, just to keep it very safe because, you know, leaks were a problem. And um, we just had to be really careful about treating it with kid gloves and making sure it didn't get out. My husband knew when I was working out, obviously, but even he wouldn't. He just, he knew it was my thing and I had to just do it on my own. If you think keeping your personal secrets is tough, imagine how Mary must have felt. And it's not like she had JK Rowling on speed dial to talk about things. In fact, Mary never spoke with JK about the illustrations and only met her once in person. From what I understand, the, keeping the the process of keeping the author and the illustrator separate, this is a common practice in the industry. Yes, yes, and what the art that? director, I think, because the author has their own idea of what this sh- all should look like. You know, it's really their baby. They've been working on it for so long, and so I, I imagine as they're writing it, they're also visualizing it, how it feels, how it looks, and. Um, you know, you kind of have to let each person do their own thing. And um, I mean, the author certainly has input about the work with picture books and also with Harry Potter. I think they shared things with her as I was um, sketching them out. And I think she did give approval, but she never uh, requested any changes or anything like that. What is your relationship with recognition for your work? Is it something that fuels you or does it even matter to you? It doesn't really matter to me. It used to fuel me, fuel me when I was needing to prove to myself that I was a good enough artist. Um, it doesn't really matter to me anymore. And sometimes it actually gets in the way mm. of me creating from a more honest place. So I appreciate it, but it's not necessary. Though Mary's work has been seen by millions of readers across the U.S., she's remained mostly in the background. For example, in the film The Devil Wears Prada. Meryl Streep is this high-powered corporate woman who wants her kids to get the Harry Potter book before it's published, and so she gets Anne Hathaway. We have all the published Harry Potter books. Twins want to know what happens next. You want the unpublished manuscript? Well, we know everyone in publishing. It shouldn't be a problem, should it? And you can do anything, right? She she knows a friend who knows the illustrator, and the illustrator gives him the gives her the uh, story. And of course, that would never happen. <laughs> be so sued, and you wouldn't want to do that anyway. So yeah. So you were technically in the Devil Wears Prada. Oh, yeah, well, no names mentioned, but I was the illustrator who gave over the, the yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we had, to, we had to watch that a couple of times and laugh about it. That's but, funny. Yeah. Did they use your actual name or was it a made-up name? No, they, they didn't even mention a name at all. But, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's really funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Harry Potter series has been translated into over 80 languages and has sold over 500 million copies. That's 150 million more than the next highest selling series, Goosebumps. It's been a hell of a ride, but taking part in a worldwide phenomenon almost didn't happen for Mary. When she first heard about the job, she turned it down. I was really busy with other work. I was doing a lot of editorial work at the time and some some picture books as well. And, um, you know, I've always been a very busy freelance artist, very fortunate that way. And so, and I think it was summer and I really just wanted to have some time off. And so I just told David, geez, thanks so much. And it's, you know, a nice offer. And we just thought it would be one or two books or maybe just one book at the time. I don't even remember. And, you know, he said, you know, really, would you just mind if I just sent you the story and you can just read it and take a look? And I said, well, okay, but I'm, 
guessing I, I probably won't be able to. But so he sent the story, story and I read it. And I really fell in love with it right away. I just loved the idea of this boy living under the stairs in this terrible family, but he's got all this amazing power within him. It just struck a chord with me. And so I, I said, yeah, I guess I'll do it. I'm glad I changed my mind. After finding blockbuster success, Mary continues to embrace the struggles of creating art. During our Skype call, a dark abstract painting hung on the wall behind her. It was a piece she'd recently created. It's uh, four by four feet. It's mixed medium, and so it's collage with paint mixed in. It's called Paper Temple. So there's this kind of journey that you travel through to get to these hidden little um, symbols and secrets inside the temple. And it's just kind of a journey and exploration. Is this piece special to you in any way? Uh, it is. It was kind of a breakthrough piece for me. It, it was a piece that came with a whole bunch of struggle. There's a lot of paintings underneath that that weren't working. And I decided one day just to paint the whole thing black. I was just kind of angry and I thought, oh, this is not working and just paint it black. And then I was standing in front of this black big square and I decided, you know, okay, now I'm going to start painting white. And I started with a roller and just making great big marks. And then I'd peel off some of the paint by putting um, craft paper on top of the wet paint and pulling it off. And it created this interesting texture and that led me to some other things. And so it was just kind of an unfolding of things that happened. And that process of creating this painting was a journey too. And so I think the painting to me kind of feels like this pathway um, of little discoveries and there's little marks and symbols within that. And that's kind of how I felt while I was creating it. As an artist, Mary offers a thoughtful and deliberate perspective on creating. And she's far from done. From hiding secrets in her work to testing the waters of new styles, she has plenty more struggles to overcome, parts of herself to discover, and magic to unearth along the way. And to all the young artists out there dreaming of illustrating a series like Harry Potter, Mary has some advice. You know, keep drawing and keep tabs on what makes you happy and, you know, why you draw in the first place. And don't lose that. Don't, don't veer away from what makes you feel good when you're creating art or creating anything important to you. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. Would you mind leaving a rating and review for the show? It only takes a moment and it's a huge help. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes. Until next time, stay curious. What We Do is produced by me, Doug Frazier, for WHRO Public Media.